Lynette and welcome to the FFT Football Show. We've got a very exciting program coming up for you today, including a preview of the Lekka Seljak Men's Statewide Cup Final and the Women's Statewide Cup Final. We've got a summary of the Forestry Tasmania Northern and Southern Premier Leagues approaching the final round and leading into the final series. We're going to have an interview with FFT CEO John Bolas and Technical Director Kurt Reynolds about all of the hot topics, including plans for a state league, the Hyundai A-League pre-season match between Melbourne Victory and Brisbane Raw. Uh, we'll also be talking about a state coaching conference and the upcoming coach education series. Now, I'm also very lucky to be joined here in the studio today with two very knowledgeable panellists. Uh, we've got Julius Ross, who of course is a writer for the Mercury and has blogged nearly every Forestry Tasmania Southern Premier League match this season and is also a current player with the South Hobart Football Club. Welcome, Julius. Thanks, Virginia. And bringing a northern flavour to the show today, Brendan linton Dog, who is a current player and committee member of the Northern Rangers Football Club. Welcome. Thank you. Now, gents, it's statewide cup finals time and the Lekka Seljak Cup will be played this Saturday night between South Hobart and the Olympia Warriors at 6.30pm. Both teams have had some very impressive results leading into the finals, but it seems that South Hobart are going to be the raging hot favourites. Brendan, why would you say that? I think particularly their strike force. Uh, I think they can score goals from just about any anywhere on the park. Um, their depth in terms of their team, they can cope with a number of injuries or uh, you know outs uh, to their side um, with the players that are, that are sitting on the bench or waiting to come through. And they just have quality across the park. I think they, they, there's not a weak link on that side, even with a few injuries. Uh, and particularly their work rate. Uh, there's not a side in Tasmania that works quite as hard on and off the ball as what South Hobart do at the moment. They put a lot of pressure on their opposition um, and they do that for 90 minutes. And um, I think there are a lot of teams that probably struggle to cope with that. Okay, well of course Olympia will take heart from their wins against the Devonport Strikers and the Tilford Zebras um, to make this final. What in particular impressed you about Olympia in these matches, Jules? Well, Olympia's struggled in the league this year. They, they've started quite slowly and, and they've always been down the bottom of the, of the table. Uh, so I think both those games, I think they were the underdogs against uh, Zebras and also against and Devonport. They weren't expected to win the game, but uh, the, playing at Warriors Park, they've, they've developed a, a home ground advantage on that AstroTurf pitch, and I think they've played it quite well. They've played, played the ball around well against both those sides. They've scored some good goals, and I think they've, they've played confidently, especially with the new signings from South Melbourne. Uh, they get the ball forward from the back and cross well, and um, no, they were both, both games they were very impressive. Okay, good. Well, Brendan, you saw South Hobart firsthand against the Rangers in the quarterfinals. What were your thoughts on that match? Um, particularly the way they approached in that week um, leading up to the game. Um, Ken was able to get his players in and train four times in preparation for the match. Um, and I think that shows a, a level of commitment and professionalism far and above what the, uh, the other teams in the state are able to achieve at the moment. Um, and, and particularly, uh, again, as I said before, the pressure that they apply to teams for 90 minutes, their ability to force a mistake and then capitalise on that mistake. Um, and by putting the ball in the back of the net. And, and, and we certainly saw that, particularly in the five minutes after half-time. You know, uh, perhaps didn't come out uh, quite as prepared as what we needed to be, and, and, and South Hobart punished us. So uh, I think Olympia will need to be wary of that, and they'll need to be on top of their game for you know, 90 minutes, if not longer, uh, to be able to uh, force a, a result against South Hobart. OK, and who would you say are the key players for each team that can win this match? I think... Um, Perhaps from a northern point of view, I'm a little bit biased, but I think Braden Mann has a uh, has a significant input into that side. I think he surprised a lot of people with how well he's adapted to the southern style of football, and I think his ability to, to create a goal individually and make the most of an opportunity that, that may come his way uh, is, is is quite significant. I think the drive that they get from Tom Roach from midfield is is impressive. Also, his physical presence and his ability to score a goal from just about any point, um, you know, makes him a very hard man to contain. Um, but for Olympia, I think uh, Colossimo has been a great uh, pick-up, as, as you said, from South Melbourne. Um, I think what he brings to, uh, to their side is significant. But also I think Josh Fielding is, uh, is, a, is, is a great play, both as a leader, um, but also you know, just for his own ability and talent. So those two guys will, will, will hold the key for Olympia. Mm -hmm. And Jules? Well, South Hobart have match winners across the park. They've got a great goalkeeper. You know, from the back, Sam Criver. Then they've got players at uh, wing backs, Loic Farrell, uh, Jimmy Pennycott, who can get forward. They can cross a ball, but they can also strike a ball. Uh, and they've contributed some goals this season. Then you've got the strikers, as he said, Braden Mann, fantastic. He can always pinch a goal. Alongside him, probably the best striker in the state, Andy Brennan. He scored 17 goals in the Southern Premier League. 
those two as a pair are fantastic. Alongside him, uh, those two, you've got uh, Johnny Lowe or Liam Scott. Again, that's probably the deadliest strike force in the state. Uh, alongside Roach in midfield, you've got Luke Hoogslut, who's really finding some form, uh, picking goals out from about 30 yards. He scored two recently, which are fantastic goals. Um, so they're always dangerous. Then you've got Shea Hickey. He's one of the most respected players in the state. Very fantastic footwork and that sort of thing. So I can't see, you know, South Hobart, how they're going to lose this game with, with the players they've got. But then again, you've, with Olympia, you've got Josh Fielding, who's a, a dual victuating medalist. He's the current holder. Then you've got Nick Meredith, who's also a fantastic player, quite underrated. And then, as, uh, as Brendan said, you've got Josh Colosimo and Jake Vandermeer, two South, uh, South Melbourne uh, signings who are fantastic players as well. So there are some key quality players for Olympia that can um, negate some of South Hobart's players. OK, well, it's shaping up to be a very exciting match. We caught up with both teams after their semi-final wins. Let's see what they had to say. Kim, are you happy with that result? Yeah, happy with the result today. Um, and the performance more so than anything else. I thought we played well. Uh, we kept our shape. Uh, our forwards were uh, always attempting to get in behind the opposition, so we have to be happy with that performance. The pitch was a bit tricky. Yeah, a little bit difficult to overplay, you know, to, to build it up from the back. But, uh, you know, you could still get your angles on and make those passes. If you played quickly uh, and didn't want too many touches, if you took an extra touch, it was going to bobble away. So I thought generally we moved the ball quite well. It took until the stroke of half time for you to score. Were you getting worried at that stage or not? I think you always get a little bit apprehensive if you haven't put one away when you've created so many good chances. But a, another great strike from Hoogie. I mean, he's proven to be a good goal scorer as well as a good ball winner and football player. So, very happy with his goal. Now, who would you like to meet in the final, Devonport or Olympia? I think uh, whoever wins the next game we'll be happy with. Um, we're happy to be in the final. A lot of respect for the Lacazelle Jack family, so we're, we're very happy to be there. You're in the final, Franco. Yeah, unbelievable, was a relegation, and by being in the final state wake up. Um, I thought we'd been playing quite well in the first half, second half we. Um, we lack a bit of probably, I don't know, it's not fitness, it's just a bit of mental, mental toughness, uh, which we probably, uh, in the next two or three weeks, we need it, especially when we play against uh, Clarence and, uh, oh, B-side first, and Clarence and uh, South Harbour. Yeah. Were you worried at any time that they could get back into it? Uh, no, I mean, they were, f I mean, they were a little bit flat, probably is the, the ground, I suppose, the ground factor. Uh, I don't know, but I think... Uh, uh, you know, I actually was expecting it to be more, especially in the middle of the park. Second half, I mean, I said to the guys, we, didn't, we didn't, don't need to be looking very pretty on play football. We had a few long balls towards the end, but uh, my, uh, we, as you saw the game, I mean, they were pressuring us in the midfield and put it, it extra players at the front. So we, we were winning 2 0, so we didn't have to chase the game. Can you beat South Hobart in the final? How we say? Is it, in the finals, everyone's game. Um, we are aware that South Over is a good, strong team. I went and watched them today. They look a bit flat at the moment, but are still scoring four goals. So, you know, obviously, uh, I might have to park the bus, you never know, or play the Catenaccio. OK, well, guys, finally, a prediction and a score. Brendan. It's pretty hard to go past South Hobart. I'm not known for my, um, my my tipping exploits, but I think South Hobart will get over the line. But I think it'll be a closer game than a lot of people are expecting, and I, and I think the support that uh, Olympia get on the sidelines will be a lift. But uh, I'm going to say I'm going to say South Hobart three one. Okay, Jules. I'm going with South also. I mean, the fact that they've had experience in these big matches before uh, in the last four years, they've been. I think this is their sixth final in four years, so. Uh, it's hard to go past them, as, as Brendan said. I think 3-0 to South. Uh, the last game they played against Olympia was 5-0, but I'm going a little bit easy on Olympia. I think it'll be 3-0. OK, well, 6.30pm this Saturday night at KGV. Let's see you out there supporting your team. Now, the statewide Women's Cup will be played between Clarence United and Launceston City, 4pm this Saturday at KGV. And both teams, of course, have experienced great success in recent seasons, with this particular match providing a very north versus south flavour. Now, Launceston City have beaten the impressive Taruna and Tilford Zebras on the road to the final. Brendan, can they go all the way? I think they can. There's probably been a bit of a, a starving of the uh, statewide success for Launceston City. They've won eight 
Northern Premier League uh, titles in a row, including this year, uh, and nine of the of the last eleven since two thousand. So look, they're they're a very good side. And going into this game, they beat Tilford Zebras four 0 Taruna three two, and Olympia four zip. So there's some pretty significant results in there, and I think uh, it all bodes well for a side that uh, uh, are looking forward to putting a statewide uh, title on their uh, medal piece this year. Now, the Clarence United side came from behind to beat a very gallant Olveston in the semi-final. Jules, what do you think we can expect there? Well, Clarence uh, started off quite well against uh, Glenorchy Knights. They won 5-0. Uh, and then against uh, Newtown Eagles, they won 11-0. So, fantastic start in both those games. Obviously, against Olveston, it was a bit closer. And I think Launceston City... Um, have done quite well this season up in the north against Olverson. So that might give it a little bit of a gauge uh, as to how this final might go. I think um, given that result, it's always hard to tell north versus south because it's always different conditions. Uh, you know, one team's got to travel and that sort of thing. But uh, given that result, I'd probably say Launceston City are probably favourites. Uh -huh. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, interesting to note. Both sides have scored 119 goals this year. Really, the only thing that separates them is the defensive record. Launceston City conceding just eight goals, and, and Clarence uh, uh, only 21. But uh, I think defensively, Launceston City will probably hold the edge. That might actually give motivation to Clarence in a way. Um, the fact that they actually have finished second to uh, NTC in, in the league, whereas Launceston City's wrapped up their league. So maybe there is that incentive there to, to go on and win a cup competition, whereas Launceston City's already got one under their under their belt. Uh -huh. Well, now the 2010 final between Taruna and the NTC went to a penalty shootout. Do you think we can expect another really tight finish in this game? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, in, in a cup, cup match, both teams are going to be fairly conservative, not going to be taking too many risks, um, which generally bodes for a, uh, a, a smaller score. But I, I think uh, look, penalties won't be off the cards, but I don't think it'll come down to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think it will come down to penalties. I think Launceston City probably uh, might have the upper hand in this game. Uh, Clarence is a talented young side, whereas Launceston City's probably got more experience. You know, they've won nine premierships in the last 11 uh, seasons. So I think they've probably got the upper hand, and I think it won't finish in a, in a penalty shootout. I think Launceston City will probably finish it off in, in 90 minutes. Yep. Launceston City being both of your predictions then. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I think probably 2 0. Okay, well, of course, rounding off the finals um, for the day at KGB this Saturday, the 13th of August, will be South Hobart versus Kingborough Lions in the under 19 cup competition. Uh, that's at 11 a.m. And the Kingborough Lions versus Launceston City in the statewide VARS at 1.30 p.m. Now, if you've not had enough of your football by then, uh, the Youth Cup finals are scheduled for the following Sunday. That's this, 14th, this Sunday, the 14th of August, commencing at 9 a.m. at the showgrounds. And you'll see there, of course, some of our best male and female youth talent on display. Now, if you'd like to get more details or to confirm that information, just head to our website, footballfedtas.com.au. Now, we were lucky enough this week to catch up with Kurt Reynolds, the Technical Director at Football Federation Tasmania, regarding Super September, which is a huge month for coach education and the development and promotion of football in Tasmania. Now, September's a huge month for coaches. What have we got to look forward to? Is it, it is an exciting month. Uh, obviously, the, the winter season culminates in September, where coaches can uh, realise some of their aspirations uh, in the finals and uh, having their competitions decided, etc. Um, in addition to that, uh, we have a couple of su significant uh, coach education events. Uh, we have the C Advanced Coaching Licence, which is a two-week living course, which will be conducted uh, in Hobart. Um, it's the first time we've uh, been able to offer up an advanced coaching course here in Tasmania, so that's a positive step forward. In addition to that, and sandwiched in the middle of that two-week period, on the 10th and 11th of September, is the inaugural Football Federation Tasmania State Coaching Conference, mm -hmm. which will be held in Launceston um, over, over those two days, uh, and that will culminate with the A-League uh, pre-season match between Melbourne Victory and Brisbane Roar on Sunday the 11th at Aurora Stadium. So, exciting period, uh, September. Absolutely. Now, there are a number of boys and girls state and regional teams in programs at the moment. What's coming up for them? That's correct. It is a busy time in that regard. We have um, seven regions across the state who have put together regional representative teams from under 10 through to under 14, both male and female. Mm -hmm. They will come together initially in Hobart in the first weekend of September to play in the Hobart Cup competition. And then two weeks later on the 17th and 18th of September, uh, they'll gather again in Launceston to play off in the Launceston Cup. So we're expecting to see the, the cream of Tasmanian young footballers, male and female, come into those competitions. In addition to that, we have the state 
under 13 and 14 male teams who have been uh, in preparation for eight, eight months now uh, and they'll be going off to the national championships in Coffs Harbour uh, in the first week of October. Oh, well we wish them all the best. Now Kurt, as Technical Director, what are your priorities? My priorities are to further communicate the national uh, curriculum, the Football Federation Australia national curriculum, and to a large degree uh, that relates to, relates to coach education and um, trying to, to upgrade the skills of our coaches here in Tasmania. So they're my priorities. Okay, wonderful. And, and finally, what does the FFT do to support the junior clubs and associations? From a football perspective, uh, we try to keep a, a, a close linkage with our junior associations and clubs. Importantly, we offer up a range of community coach education courses and um, we've really tried hard to make those more accessible. Uh, in addition to that, our FF, FFT football staff are looking to work closely with all uh, junior association coaches across the state. Okay. Now, it's reaching the business end of the Forestry Tasmania Northern and Southern Male and Female Premier League competitions. And what better time for some discussion ahead of the final round leading into the Forestry Tasmania Final Four Series. Now firstly, focusing on the male Forestry Tasmania Premier Leagues. Brendan, it's been a tight tussle at the top all year between Devonport, the Prospect Knights and the Rangers in the north. Um, who would you say have been the biggest improvers this year in the Forestry Tasmania Northern Premier League? I don't think you can go past Prospect Knights. I think they've had a pretty significant year. They've obviously going through to uh, challenge for the title in the last game of the season. Previously, they've been competitors right up until about the halfway point and then fallen away. So this year, they've certainly proved a lot of people wrong and, uh, and have been able to maintain that, uh, that high level right throughout the year, right to the last game, so uh, I don't think you can go past Prospect. But outside the top four, Somerset uh, started very poorly, um, really struggled to win a game and, and have put things together towards the end of the year with the promotion of some youth and uh, also uh, just some dedication. So they've had a massive improvement to, uh, from, from the first half of the year to the second half of the year. Mm -hmm. Julius, um, South Hobart, another great season in the, securing the league some time back. Do you think that they've got the motivation to go all the way? Absolutely. I think the fact that they've wrapped up the title probably uh, would have helped them motivate them. But uh, I think the fact also that they lost a the game this season, uh, they lost their unbeaten run, probably will motivate them even more. They've got a very good motivator in, in Ken Morton, um, who's probably going to ensure that they're 100% focused and 100% prepared for this match. Uh, the fact that they have lost one game might mean that there are the teams out there that can actually uh, expose a vulnerability within the side. But I think... Um, they will be definitely prepared for this, this final series. Yep. Now, I know you get out to a lot of matches during the season. What would you say has been your standout match and why? Uh, I think it's difficult to pinpoint one match um, as a standout, but there was one weekend, one weekend that uh, I particularly thought was quite fantastic for, for football in this state. It was actually the weekend after South Hobart had wrapped up the Premiership. They'd gone 63 games unbeaten, and I know there are a few people out there disillusioned uh, to the fact that they'd, they'd done it quite easy uh, throughout the year. Uh, but then Newtown Eagles came out and beat them 2-1 uh, and the passion that the, that club showed in, in beating um, South Hobart and what it meant to them was fantastic. Uh, also in that weekend there was a battle for the top two spots between um, Zebras and Clarence fighting for second and third place and they actually played out a four-all draw with some fantastic goals and a late equaliser which is a great game to watch and great goals for, for everyone to enjoy. Um, also in that weekend uh, Olympia who had been struggling with relegation finally got uh, three points which were, were desperately needed against uh, Glenorchy Knights and also the passion showed by that club, the coach, the players and the, the fans was fantastic. So that was a great weekend all round. Mm. And what about you, Brenton? I think uh, the return to night football at Valley Road when uh, Valley Road opened up for a double header, Northern Rangers played Alveston and then Devonport played Prospect Knights, but particularly Prospect Knights beating Devonport 4-1 in a game they probably expected to lose. Uh, and in the end they were quite clinical and, and really haven't dropped the ball since. So. Mm -hmm. So that, that particular uh, game at Valley Road would definitely be a standout for me. Yep. How would you say the standard of um, the competition compares this year to last year, for example? It's pretty hard. I mean, we in, in the Northern Premier League, we often lose a couple of players either interstate or to, 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 to the south, and we very rarely get an injection of talent uh, from the other direction. Um, but one thing that I think we've seen this year is a, from, from a lot of clubs is the promotion of youth um, throughout uh, the team's senior lists. Um, does that make it a better competition or a worse competition from the year before? I don't know. I, I think it probably bodes well for a, for a stronger t competition going forward with so many good young players coming through the system. Yeah. And have you seen many similarities in the South? 
Jules? I think, as Brendan said, it's hard to sort of gauge whether 2010 was a better year than 2011 or vice versa. Um, I think in terms of imports, it's been fantastic for the South. We've um, had a Korean contingent that, that, that's come into to Clarence. We've had two guys from South Melbourne, Jake Vandermeer and Josh Colosimo, have come into Olympia. Um, there's also Loic Ferrell, a Frenchman, who's come to South Hobart. Also another Frenchman, uh, Matthew Gregoire, who was fantastic for, for nights before he had to go back to France. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been fantastic to see these imports, and I think they really lift, lift the level... Um, of other players at the clubs. I also think that, that you know, having local talent playing against talented players and experienced players is fantastic for the game. Um, in terms of overall, I don't think the level has uh, risen considerably, but having those, those um, imports is fantastic. Yeah. And now, has there been one team in particular this year that's exceeded your expectations? Look, I think it's been a fairly uh, similar season to last year, but I think Newtown Eagles has uh, outdone expectations. I think in the first round they went unbeaten. Uh, sorry, they, they only lost one game, and that was actually against Beachside, who were relegated, so that was a bit of an unfortunate game. Apart from that game, they drew against South Hobart, drew against Clarence, and they, they got some fantastic results. They did have some internal issues, I believe, and there was a change of coach and that sort of thing, so it would have been interesting to see whether they hadn't have those, had those issues and whether they could have actually pushed South Hobart all the way. Yeah. Um, but I think definitely they have improved uh, last year. I think they finished third last. Now they're looking at finals football. So in their 50th year, that's a great achievement for them. Mm, and in the north then, Brendan? Yeah, you can't go past prospect. You know, Again, as, as I said, you know, for years they'd failed to, uh, to push for the whole season. And this year they've done that. So credit to them. Mm -hmm. We'll see what happens for the uh, final series. All right. Well, now if we turn our attention to the Northern Women's Premier League, um, Brendan, Launceston City have again been the standout team in the north. What's your take on them leading into the final series and do you think they can go all the way? Not 100% not, not sure. The Southern League is definitely a stronger league in the Women's Premier League. Um, but having said that, Launceston City are, are a standout in, in the north and, and I think they can match it with every team in the, uh, in the south. So I think the NTC is going to be their biggest, uh, their biggest stumbling block. They've been pretty strong in the south by the look of things. I think for Launceston City, if they're going to win it, their, their defence in the statewide championship needs to be uh, firm as it has been in the Premier League. Mm -hmm. And uh, they need to look to Chelsea Smith uh, to score a few more goals and add to her uh, already impressive tally. Okay, well, Alveston, of course, were unlucky to be knocked out in the statewide cup finals or semi-finals. Can they build um, momentum during the final four series? I've seen them a couple of times, and I think uh, I think they can. I think they can push the southern teams that they come up against. It just depends who they get and uh, how they travel. But uh, look, don't be surprised if Alveston certainly get through that first round. Mm. Now, Jules, um, the NTC women's squad have been in the Premier League for the first time this season. The NTC have secured this league and enjoyed a tight tussle with Clarence and Taruna all season. What do you think we can expect um, from those teams leading into the, the semi-finals? Well, NTC has obviously had a great season. Obviously, they, they train under a program. They've got a f fantastic coach in Michael Edwards, and they've got great personnel to, to work with. They're all institute girls. Uh, they've gone, I think, out of 14 games, they've won 13 uh, and only dropped two points in one draw the whole season. Mm -hmm. Scored 119 goals, and I think they've only conceded eight. So they've had a very brilliant season in their first uh, foray into to Women's Premier League. Um, I think they're going to definitely be the favourites going into to these final series. Obviously, Launceston City is also a strong side from up north, um, but Taruna and Clarence are going to be there or thereabouts. I think they've always sort of pushed NTC um, as opposed to some of the other the, the lower teams in the Women's Premier League. They've sort of struggled against the NTC. Um, and then you've got Olympia there as well, who's all, also finished in the top four. So I think their first task is against Launceston City, so that's an interesting one. I think maybe uh, Olympia might be going home a little bit early from the final series. Now, the Women's Premier League continues to go from strength to strength, which just shows how important it is uh, to have a thriving and competitive league for the continued development and growth of women's football in Tasmania. And the Forestry Tasmania final series will build the top four teams in the North and South in both the men's and women's competitions, um, competing on the weekend of the 27th and 28th of August. You can check out all of the information at footballfedtas.com.au and um, don't miss this great opportunity to get out there and see some of the best teams in the state go head to head. Now, while we're on the state fixtures, uh, this week we caught up with John Bolas, CEO of Football Fed Tasmania, um, to find out more about some of the key strategic initiatives that are on the radar, including plans for a state league in 2013 and plans for the Hyundai A-League pre-season match between the Melbourne Victory and the Brisbane Roar. Now, John, I hear there's plans for the implementation of a state league in 2013. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, certainly. It's, uh, at the moment, we have a Northern and Southern Premier League competition, which are, which are thriving, and we're looking at ways to 
ensure our best players play against our best players week in, week out. So our clubs are, are very supportive of the concept. We held a meeting in Campbelltown several weeks ago now where, where the feeling was, sure, we, we want to look at extra models, we want to look at the finance models behind it, and we want to see if it's viable. So where we're at at the moment is we'll go away and, and develop a business case and present that back to our clubs, but certainly it remains the intention to have the best possible statewide competition we can in 2013. Excellent. Now, of course, increasing the exposure of football in Tasmania remains a key priority for the FFT. Can you tell us what steps are being taken to achieve this? Yes, certainly. We understand that if we want to have the best possible competition, we've got to have a very good foundation to communicate that message. And at the moment, we're finalising our plans to develop a communication and marketing strategy that positions football as the major participation sport in Tasmania. So some exciting plans and developments will come out of that, but we're hoping to launch later this year, but certainly give us the opportunity to provide some increased exposure for the sport and really feed off the fact that we have the most participants playing in the state. Okay, now I hear there's also a big month ahead for football. Can you tell us a bit more about that? It's a very big month ahead. We've got finals, and I guess finals fever hits Tasmania, and it, and it's, it's an important opportunity for those clubs to, to finish the year well. We have our statewide cup finals coming up this weekend, uh, which will be exciting and always generate a, a very big crowd. Mm -hmm. And that then leads into our Forestry Tasmania Grand Final Series, which is a, always an exciting time, both in the male and, and female sections. We're excited this year that our Grand Finals will be held in conjunction with the uh, Hyundai A-League uh, pre-season fixture to be held at Aurora Stadium. That's an exciting opportunity to showcase our local talent, and we're excited by that fact. Well, that's about all we have time for today, sadly. I'd like to thank our panellists for coming in today, Julius and Brendan. Thank you guys for coming in. We no appreciate all of your feedback and, and chat. And uh, we hope you enjoy the rest of the season. For more details on upcoming fixtures and other information, please feel free to log on to our website, footballfedtas.com.au. Bye for now.